All right, so let's look at some important characteristics of trigonometric graphs. So let's look at our two uh, graphs. We have y equals um, a sine of bx minus c and y equals a times cosine of bx minus c. So an important thing that we want to deal with, you know, two of the main important things besides like the transformations, right? We kind of talked about what c does and then if I was going to add add or subtract a number outside the function, that's going to you know, affect the graph up and down as well for um, translations. But what are kind of just some main important points about that we need to know for our trigonometric graphs? The first one is the amplitude. And if you remember, by finding the amplitude, we said the amplitude is equal to the absolute value of a. And what that's going to do is, remember, that's going to tell us the distance from the maximum forward to the minimum. So the amplitude is actually not the, actually, the amplitude is half of the distance from your maximum point on your graph to your minimum point on your graph. So the amplitude is you know, going to tell you kind of how much your graph is going to vertically stretched or kind of shrunk. Then the next thing we're going to talk about is our period. Now the period is going to be related to your b, where we have 2 pi divided by b. Now if you remember when we graphed originally sine and cosine, when I went through the whole cycle, for, for us to go through a whole cycle where the graph actually started to repeat itself, it took us a distance of 2 pi. And you can also kind of remember that. Well, remember, if you go around the unit circle, all the way around the unit circle with all those angles is a distance of 2 pi. So if I have a number in front of my x, which is b, that is actually going to now affect my period uh, by doing 2 pi and then dividing it by b. Now the next thing is, so our graph, we, you know, if we always remember, we started at 0 and then we went to 2 pi. But a lot of times by the period, that's going to shrink it or elongate it, and then the amplitude's going to stretch it or compress it. Now the next thing that's kind of really important that we can do is we can always start, we can always see where our initial period is going to start and going to end. Now remember, the sine and cosine graphs are cyclical. They constantly repeat. So there really is no start or end to them. However, when getting to graphing, if we want to look into kind of um, you know, what point it's going to start on if, let's say, it does not cross at 0, 0, it might cross at another end. So we can take one period and alter that period to a point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite. If, if remember, our original function always started at bx or at 0. So we could say bx minus c equals 0. And what you'll notice is if we now have an alteration, let's say c now is a different value, that's actually going to shift the graph over. So this is going to help us to kind of, rather than starting at 0, we could actually start our graph at um, whatever value we see. And then we can end the graph at bx minus c equals 2 pi. Now remember, starting and end, not really start the end, but start and end exactly one period. Then once you've graphed one period, you can replicate that period in the positive and in the negative direction. So usually to get started, what we like to do is always determine what the amplitude is, then determine what the period is, and then once you determine the period, begin by finding your starting and your end points. And the last thing I'm going to leave you with is, if you remember, whenever we, whenever we found our period, there was four important points. We had our intercepts and our maximums and our minimums. So what I like to do is I always like to find my coordinate points is I always like to take the period and divide it by 4. And what that's going to do, depending on if I'm deal dealing with the sine or the cosine graph, that's going to give me my important points of where I'm going to have a maximum, an intercept, or a minimum. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. There's some important characteristics of trigonometric graphs.